Um, my name is Toya. I'm a member of Socialist Alternative. I'm also a laid off electrician in the IBEW Local 103. And we have Jessica here with us um, from Colorado Springs, Colorado, um, who is a worker at Joanne Fabrics. So Jessica, let us know what is going on in your workplace right now. I'm hearing about walkouts. Can you tell a little bit about uh, what you guys are doing organizing in your workplace? You know, nationally, there's a lot going on with Joann's right now, but at our location here in Colorado Springs, we are the largest location in the state, and I believe we're the third largest in the company of 900 stores nationwide, so that's kind of a big deal. Um, we do massive amounts of traffic through our store on a regular basis. The coronavirus and the social distancing was doing nothing to slow that traffic down. As a matter of fact, it was having the opposite result. And I mean, we were having like back to back Black Friday status numbers of customers coming into the store. Um, and it, it just got to the point where a lot of the employees didn't feel safe. Um, you know, a lot of the customers were complaining. Some of my co-managers were getting phone calls where they were literally getting screamed at about why are we open, this, that, and the other thing. Um, so a group of us got together and we decided to protest the conditions under which we were working. Um, and, and we were able to get some response from corporate. Our store is now closed to the public. We are doing curbside uh, pickup for customers that want to make masks um, for, for the medical uh, industry. Um, so, you know, we're still getting our product and our goods out to the customers, but everybody's a lot safer the way it's operating now versus the way we were before the protest. That is amazing that you yeah. and your coworkers work together and, and we're fighting united against, you know, this basic pandemic that's putting us all at risk. It's super inspiring. Do you feel like the curbside pickup is putting you guys in a better position or do you still feel that more measures need to be taken? Oh, absolutely. No, I feel like it's putting us in a much, much better position. Um, we're able to get the orders picked and processed in a timely manner because we're not dealing with literally hundreds of people in the stores at any given time. Um, it's giving us a lot more time to clean and sanitize our facilities, get our store cleaned up and put back together, which is something as such a large location with so much traffic, we desperately need more time to get our store back in order under regular circumstances. So, um, you know, having this time right now where we can just focus on the online orders and, and have the time to clean and get our store situated is it's really awesome. I suppose during a quarantine, people are picking up crafts. I know when I was younger, I used to go to Joanne Fabrics to get string to make friendship bracelets. But um, corporate was saying that Joanne Fabrics workers were essential workers. Um, do you see uh, your retail store as an essential workplace during a pandemic? You know, I, I can't say that I do. I mean, uh, the ability to get fabric, yes, I, I can see where some may say that that's essential, uh, particularly with the pandemic and the way everybody is asking um, for the masks and, and whatnot. And we have become a, a donation center for dropping off masks. We do have um, some doctor's offices and other uh, medical facilities that are coming by and, and uh, like um, adult care facilities um, and, and so on that are coming by to pick up some of the masks that have been donated. Um, however, to say that Joann's as a whole is an essential business, you know, frankly, you can buy online and have it delivered to your house within two business days. So for the storefronts to be open, I don't think that's essential. So I wouldn't think about Joann Fabrics masks being something that nurses and doctors could use. Um, are these masks sufficient to protect nurses and doctors that, um, you know, customers are making? Um, they are not actually what they are is mask covers and a mask cover can extend the longevity of a disposable mask in that you can change the mask cover between patients without changing the medically protective disposable mask in between patients. So you do have, you know, different covering between patients, but you still have the protective gear of the mask underneath that. But it, for like long-term longevity, it's not gonna make it so you can use a disposable mask for a number of days. After a couple of patients, you're still gonna have to throw that mask away because it will become contaminated. Um, if you come into certain circumstances, you're gonna have to still dispose of that mask and the mask cover 
um, as well as, you know, people, I see people all the time and it's driving me nuts, honestly, uh, out at the grocery store, out just in public wearing these cloth masks. And the fact of the matter is that just wearing these cloth masks can actually be more detrimental to your health than wearing nothing at all. Because if you came into contact with someone that uh, was sick and there were pathogens in the air, with nothing at all covering you, there's a fairly good chance that you could walk past unscathed. Not enough of the pathogens would enter your system to cause you any real harm. To walk past those same pathogens with a cotton mask on, it the pathogens are gonna get caught in the mask basically, and you're gonna continue to breathe them in, which is putting yourself at more risk, which is putting your family at more risk. So it, it seems kind of inefficient to have, you know, individuals going to join fabrics, purchasing things just to make these masks. It's super inspiring to see people on Facebook and things like that doing it. But it seems like it would be more efficient if we had factories, people standing at a machine and producing thousands of masks per hour that are actually suitable for nurses and doctors. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, while I applaud Joanne's efforts with the donations and, and, whatever, to date, um, to my knowledge, and this is just me doing research on Google, um, Joann's Nationwide has donated about a million and a half dollars worth of supplies, which is a big deal um, to, to help get these masks made. Even my location, we're still giving out free fabric, free thread, we're out of elastic, we're out of interfacing, we have been for about two weeks now, but we are giving out what we can to help in these efforts. Um, however, Nationwide, customers have purchased upward of $9 million worth of fabric and materials to make these masks. So Joann's isn't, isn't matching what customers are putting in. That's, that's insane. Um, so I want to focus back on you and your coworkers and how you were able to prepare for the walkout. Um, what types of conversations were you having? Was it, you know, during break time? Was it over the internet, through text? How did you guys organize yourselves? Um, so I am a manager. I'm the cashier manager at Joann's. Um, I am the type of manager that always tells my ladies, don't deal with crappy customers. That's what they pay me more for. I will always take your crappy customers. Um, my employees know that they can come to me when they're having a bad day, if they need time off. For whatever reason, uh, most of my girls, they know that I've got their back in, in any situation. And, you know, over the past few weeks, I've, you know, heard countless concerns and complaints about the conditions that we're working in, the fact that there's so many people in the store that we don't have time to properly sanitize, the um, exposure levels for the number of people that are in the store, uh, even myself personally asking people to maintain social distancing and them pretty much telling me to fuck off, you know, I mean, it, it's just, it's been crazy. So over all these comments and all these concerns and people starting to call out, I just wanted my community and my employees and their families to be safe. We've been offering um, the curbside pickup where you don't even have to get out of your car. We'll bring it out to you. All you gotta do is pick up the phone and call us when you get there and we will bring your order right out to you. We've been offering that for nearly three weeks now, company wide. And we just didn't understand why we were still hosting a hundred plus people in the store when that was such a viable option. Um, so, you know, uh, some of us with balls got together and made some signs and, you know, we wanted to, we wanted to follow the CDC guidelines. We stayed six feet apart. We didn't congregate more than 10 at a time. Um, you know, some, some people were at work and then would clock out and join us. And then, you know, one would leave and another would come. Um, so we, we managed to hold it down for the entire business day. We talked to a couple of different news outlets, which really helped get the message out. And uh, because of the media backlash, we were able to close the store to the public. So, so I'm, I'm pretty proud of that. Not going to lie. It's so inspiring. Like, I love it. I'm, I loved this group of mostly women, I'm assuming, working at Joanne's Fabrics, got together and, and stood up against the corporation's greed to continue to work in these conditions. So I just want to clarify, it was, the store was still open and you guys did like a social distance protest or was there a picket or? We, uh, you know, originally we had uh, discussed about 
uh, how they were going to pay their bills. Uh, you know, I mean, we've all been concerned about this in this time of uncertainty anyway, but you know, for fear of losing their jobs, some people got cold feet. So we decided, you know what, let's just protest. It doesn't have to be a strike. We can still get our message out. We don't have to interfere with business, which we didn't. We still allowed customers to come and go in and out of the store. Um, I'd say about 30% of our customers were fully in support of everything that we were doing. Um, one of my uh, main, I, honestly, I couldn't have done it without her, uh, Ashley, she had made a sign that had um, the corporate contact information on it. And we got a lot of people that came and took pictures of that information. We saw people calling corporate and the news from their cars in support of what we were doing. So, you know, I mean, it was really, it was really touching the whole thing. Honestly, the first time I talked to the news, I almost had a panic attack. <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> I bet it's nerve wracking, but I mean, like I said, it's so, it's so inspirational. Um, and I totally understand the fear of workers, you know, to walk out of the job. Um, but that's great. You kept it going for the whole day. So what's next for Joanne in Colorado Springs? Are you guys going to continue organizing or are there plans to reopen the store? Um, as of right now, we are shut down to the public and I have not heard of an end date for that. Um, I think that corporates is kind of playing it by ear right now. And as long as the online orders keep rolling in and we keep managing that the way we have been for the last few days, I think that we're going to continue to stay um, as just the curbside pickup for a while. Uh, we are still doing uh, the supplies that we have on hand for the kit donations. Those are free for the public to come pick up. Um, they can, uh, I, as far as I know, most stores are doing this, particularly the larger ones. Um, so nationwide, if, if you're looking to, to help with the mask covers, um, you could you should be able to go to just about any Joanne store. And if they have the materials available, they should have a yard of fabric and a spool of thread available for you for free um, so that you can contribute to your community as well. Um, side note, I do wanna say that none of us lost our jobs, which is even more spectacular because we got changed, we stood up for ourselves and we're all still employed. So, you know, just, if you're if you're worried about your job, I can't say I can't guarantee that you're sorry. I can't guarantee that your company will respond the same way, but you know what? It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to lose your job if you stand up for yourself. We all have rights. We all have limits. You know, sometimes enough is just enough and you know, sometimes we've all just got to have the courage to stand up for each other.